It is uh, my pleasure to introduce Dr. Michael Howell, uh, who is Associate Professor and Vice Chair of Education in the Department of Neurology at the University of Minnesota. Dr. Howell is going to provide an overview of the management of REM sleep behavior disorder, and he is an expert in this field, having served and continue to serve as the American Academy of Sleep Medicine Task Force Chair on the practice parameters on the management of REM sleep behavior disorder. Welcome, Dr. Howell. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abaddon. Appreciate it. And uh, it, thank you for uh, joining us to learn a little bit more about how REM sleep behavior disorder, this common challenging condition is managed. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how REM sleep behavior disorder is treated. And first and most importantly is just uh, understand that this, that RBD is common. You are, if you have RBD or if you know someone or a family member has RBD, you are not alone. Uh, REM sleep behavior disorder, uh, there are at least 80 million uh, people worldwide who struggle with this, 1% of the population, uh, and one in 20 over the age of 60. If, uh, I know Dr. Abaddon and myself who speak to a variety of groups, it is if we talk about REM sleep behavior disorder to any large group of people, like we, uh, uh, without, without exception, always have one or two people afterwards come and tell us, well, this is something that I'm experiencing or my spouse is experiencing this or my dad is experiencing this. <clears throat> so please know that you, are in, that you are in good company. Please also know that REM sleep behavior disorder is treatable. This is a uh, condition where we can, we can help you. Most importantly is just to start off with bedroom safety. So dream enactment uh, can involve thrashing, punching, and kicking. Um, this can involve hitting bed partners. This can involve picking up something uh, nearby, uh, like an alarm clock or a lamp, um, and uh, throwing it across the room, or unfortunately throwing it or striking a bed partner with it. So just take a moment to look at the bedroom environment. How high is the bed? If you were to fall out of your bed, how far of a fall is it? Um, take a look at uh, items nearby uh, and whether or not any of them can be removed or placed farther away. Um, bed partners, uh, oftentimes when we're getting this under control, uh, should sleep separate for a while while we're trying to uh, get dream enactment under control. <clears throat> take a close look at how close the bed or mattress is to windows or to stairs. And then importantly, uh, it's very important to remove any weapons like a firearm from the bedroom because they can be uh, discharged by patients with REM sleep behavior disorder uh, in the middle of the night. Um, then it's very important, what other sleep problems may you be experiencing? Because if you help uh, address uh, sleep apnea, for example, or restless leg syndrome or periodic limb movements, if you take care of those more often than not, the dream enactment will get better, if not significantly resolve. Uh, narcolepsy is a common condition where if you help address many of the symptoms of narcolepsy, the REM sleep behavior disorder gets better. <clears throat> and then we know that some medications often make dream enactment and REM sleep behavior disorder worse. Uh, most often antidepressants, in particular SSRIs, this, uh, uh, selective serotonergic reuptake inhibitors, these often make um, REM sleep behavior disorder worse. And so if you can safely uh, come off of these medications or titrate down or maybe switch to a different medication, that often will make REM sleep behavior disorder better. For many people though, even after you address other underlying sleep issues, get a good night's sleep, um, take a look at your medications, you're still having dream enactment. And then the question is, is how do we, what do we do then? <clears throat> Uh, two, two, step, uh, two strategies, uh, many uh, doctors will go ahead and start melatonin, some will go ahead and start clonazepam, um, but the, these, are, these are two agents that have um, quite a few years of evidence behind them. Um, melatonin, the over-the-counter um, uh, vitamin supplement, <clears throat> usually we dose it starting in three milligrams and then increase up to six and then if necessary to nine. And our goal here is to prevent injury, to prevent uh, sleep-related injury, particularly getting out of bed, jumping out of bed, or standing up in bed because those are high; those behaviors are at high risk. Uh, so we would like melatonin 
uh, to knock those behaviors down uh, so that you are not hurting, risking your, hurting yourself or a bed partner. Melatonin generally is well tolerated. <clears throat> some people have vivid dreams on it. Some people have an upset stomach. Some people uh, wake up in the middle of the night, can't get back to sleep. Uh, clonazepam uh, is a benzodiazepine. Is It is an uh, older uh, sleeping medication. <clears throat> it, is, uh, it also can be effective in the treatment of dream enactment and REM sleep behavior disorder, usually starting off at small doses and then slowly increasing. Um, uh, be, uh, with any sleeping medication, need to be careful about morning sedation, morning sleepiness, gait imbalance, uh, dependence. It is for this reason, it is uh, used with caution in elderly individuals. Um, and then also there's uh, recognizing uh, that if, if for people who have Parkinson's disease, who may have dementia with Lewy bodies, uh, we tend to be cautious with the use of a benzodiazepine like clonazepam uh, in that population. Uh, there are other medications, most notably rivastigmine, uh, which appears to be appropriate and particularly in the setting of individuals who have REM sleep behavior disorder and some degree of cognitive impairment. And in particularly those who've also been diagnosed uh, with dementia with Lewy bodies. But ultimately what I would really focus on is that, is that you have, for those, if you have REM sleep behavior disorder or a family member does, this is common. Uh, you are not alone. Uh, this is a treatable condition and work with your doctor. Uh, and uh, I know Dr. Abaddon uh, is also extremely proud and uh, thrilled to be part of the NAPS consortium. Uh, I'm at the University of Minnesota. Dr. Abaddon is at uh, University of California, Los Angeles, uh, but we're affiliated with so many other wonderful institutions uh, across the United States and Canada. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's wonderful to uh, chat with you. And for those of you who have any other, um, uh, if, if you were interested in learning more, please check out uh, the NAPS website. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Howell, for this uh, excellent overview. And we appreciate your contribution. Thank you again.